one of the new pieces of cloud technology I've been working with is Terraform Cloud. A Terraform Cloud is essentially a way or a platform to deploy your Terraform code from a centralized location. In this video, we're going to take a look at just that, how to create a resource group with Terraform code using Terraform Cloud. Let's get started. Before we jump into the demo, I do want to point out one thing, and there's a speculation with Terraform Cloud being just paid. It's actually not. There are free and paid plans, and what I'm going to show you today is actually 100% free. I have not paid anything for it to Terraform Cloud. So for smaller teams, free is good, and then for paid, there's different paid plans for like larger organizations and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and log in. So we're going to go to Google. I'm just going to type in Terraform Cloud Login. And this is the exact same way you can get there as well, or you can go right to the URL. URL is app.terraform.io. And actually what I want to do here before we even do this is I want to sign out to just show you all that you can just create a free account right from here. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log back in and we'll get started. As you can see here, I have definitely played around in here a little bit. It's, it's definitely fun technology. I'm loving Terraform Cloud. Uh, well, before we even jump into creating anything, let's just talk about what Terraform Cloud is for a second. So imagine if you have Terraform code that you need to deploy and you want a centralized location to deploy that from. That's what Terraform Cloud is for. It holds your state and it deploys your code. And by your state, I mean your TF state. So I'm going to click on new workspace and then I can now choose where I want to create that workspace and what I want to connect to it in terms of source control to pull my Terraform code. For the purposes of what we'll actually create, what we're going to do is we're going to create a resource group. So I'm going to look up cloud in my repositories here and I'm going to type in the or I'm going to choose the cloud dev resource group. And then I have a few of these already, so I'm just going to name this three. And then I'm going to click create workspace. And this is going to take a little bit just for all of the confirmation to come through for the VCS provider. And that's a virtual cloud server. And we are now ready to go. So the next thing that we should do right off the bat is configure our variables. And what do I mean by this? Well, let's just go to GitHub really quick. And I'm going to go to my project where my code is. Just search for the resource group code once GitHub decides to load here. And then I'm going to go to my repositories and I'm going to search for resource group. I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to go to my variables. And as you can see, I'm passing in a few different variables. I have the resource group name, the location. The subscription ID, client ID, client secret and tenant ID. Now, the reason why. I need these variables is because I'm passing these in at runtime for authentication in my provider. And then I'm using the location to where I want to create the resource group in and then the resource group name that I'm creating. And then if we go ahead and we just look in the main code here, we can see where all of these come from. Again, the client ID secret, all that is for the provider authentication. And then the resource is the resource group that I'm creating. So let's go ahead and go back and start adding in some variables. So the first thing that I'm going to add in is the RG name for the resource group name. And we'll just go ahead and name this mjl dev 92 and you can put a description in here if you want to then i'm going to add in my location east us because that's the closest to me now this is where things start to get interesting to authenticate you need an app registration or a service principle and they need to have rbac policies or role based access control policies that allow to create resources from the api so let's go ahead and just Create that right in the. So let's go ahead and just create that in PowerShell using the Azure CLI. I'm going to pull up PowerShell here and here's my PowerShell window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this AZ ADSP create for RBAC. Then the role is going to be contributor and then I'm going to have my scope, which is going to be my entire subscription. 
I'm going to go ahead and create this now. And then what this is going to do is this is going to produce a tenant ID, the client ID, the app password, everything that I need to be able to authenticate from Terraform cloud to Azure. So I'm just going to move this to my other screen so I can easily copy and paste it. in so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing is I'm going to put in the client ID and the next thing that we're going to put in is the password or the secret. Now you may be wondering, well, how can I pass this in? And it's not plain text. That's a very good question. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually click the sensitive box. And once we add in the secret variable, you'll see what this looks like compared to the other variables. And now, as you can see, it just says sensitive, right? Only like you can't do anything with it. You can't see anything for it. And that's great because that means that we can pass in whatever variables we want at runtime. And we don't have to worry about those variables being plain text. So we're going to save this variable. And then we have one more variable that we need to use and that's the AZ account subscription ID. I'm going to add one more variable and then that's my subscription ID. And now we are ready to go. So we have all of our variables in here and we can now start to queue our plan and we can just name this testing for the reason and we can start the queue here and this is going to take a few minutes and what you're going to see is during the plan it's going to look very similar as if you're just running this on the terminal itself like if you ran terraform plan where your code is the output is going to be very very similar here where we're going to see exactly what's being created the location all that and then now what's going to happen is we're going to get a prompt and this prompt is going to say okay do you want to deploy this or do you want to wait or do you want to cancel for example and we can just do the confirm and apply here and then we can say testing resource group creation and let's go ahead and confirm that plan and then now what's going to happen is our plan has been confirmed everything is queued and we can now see that the resource is being created and this may take a minute or two so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until it's done and as we can see, our resource has been created. Let's go ahead and go to the Azure portal. And it may take a minute or two for the resource to actually come up in the Azure portal. But let's see if it's there. We'll log in here. We're going to go to resource groups. And we have one of my old ones here. It's not available just yet. Let's give it a refresh. And we can now see that our resource group has been successfully created. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a little in-depth knowledge of Terraform Cloud, what it's used for, how cool of a platform it is, and honestly, how straightforward it is. I mean, we got through that video in less than 15 minutes or less than 10 minutes, actually. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward as long as you have access to Azure and you have the Terraform code written already. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Definitely let me know if you'd like to see more stuff like this. Take care.